So I'm, I'm Graham Snape, I'm an international trade advisor uh, for the Southeast, UKTI Southeast. Uh, I cover a specific sector, anything to do with education and skills and training, and I also champion India as a, as a destination, and yesterday I, I spoke about India. But today uh, I'm talking about the general UKTI services. Uh, international trade advisors generally are all from the private sector and we have, we have actually done what you are trying to do. We have been exporters either of services or products uh, and we are bringing that expertise uh, to you now. And I think the, 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 the point about the international trade advisor is that we are the ones who know what's happening in UKTI. You are the people who want the services of UKTI, but you don't necessarily know which service you need or even know that such a service exists. So the point about the ITA is that they know your business, they know what's happening in UKTI, so they can then come to you and say, oh, by the way, you were thinking of going to this trade exhibition. Did you know there's a grant you can apply for? Or maybe, did you know that there's a trade exhibition in your sector taking place in such a place? Perhaps that's what you ought to do. So the ITA becomes a, an interpreter of, of the services. And the reason why you need a uh, an interpreter is because that's what the UKTI service spinner looks like. Don't try and read it. <laughs> it. It's simply there to get across to you that the UKTI offer is very, very complex. And it, it covers all sorts of different aspects. Some of it is uh, strategic thinking. Some of it is tactical thinking. Some of it might actually be export finance, some real hard nitty gritty help on, on, on export finance. So there's a whole range of activities and just briefly going around the board, there are, for example, VVIP missions that go out from time to time. Maybe a prime minister, maybe a minister is taking a delegation to a country. They will want companies who are active in that country and they will seek advice from ITAs as to which companies should accompany them. Now, we then give perhaps the suggestions that such a company is doing well, uh, and sometimes they are selected to go on the mission. They have to pay for it, but of course the mission comes with a very, very high profile, and as such, the companies that go can expect to meet people that they would not otherwise get to meet. And I had a, a client go on a, such a mission to India. He went uh, during the last parliament with the Deputy Prime Minister and he'd been trying to meet certain people uh, for maybe 12 months before that. But the fact that he was on a trade mission with the Deputy Prime Minister meant that he could get through doors and meet people that he would not have otherwise have done. Uh, and, and it led to business. In fact, he, he estimates he will make something like 400 million this year out of his... Uh, 400, no, 400,000, sorry, not million, uh, out of his business in, in India this year. So trade missions like that can be effective. Uh, there are training programs, there's passport to export, there is uh, the opportunity to have research undertaken for you, there is the opportunity to visit some of our commercial offices embedded in our embassies overseas. All of these are services which are available to UK companies who are relatively new to export or who are exploring a new export market. So it's a very, very complex program. Don't even try and remember all that, but do try to remember who your ITA should be and ask them to remember it for you. 
So that was the trade delegation that went to India uh, with uh, the Deputy Prime Minister last year. And that guy uh, was my client. <laughs> and he, he's only a small company, he's not a big company, uh, employs less than 10 people, so he's quite, quite small. But he was with that delegation, and because of that, he met people that he would not have otherwise have done. Now, I like to think of the UKTI services as the colours on a, an artist palette. For example, the green at the top could be Passport to Export. Now, Passport to Export is a training programme for companies which really are new to export. And it takes them through the steps that you ought to be taking if you are going to take exporting seriously. It stresses the importance that you do your research and it highlights where you might get that research from. It introduces you to the concept of using uh, commercial officers embedded in British embassies overseas to provide some of those services or, or little pieces of advice. And even if you are relatively experienced as an exporter and you are visiting a new country, I would always recommend that you try to meet the commercial officer who covers your sector. Have a coffee with them, spend half an hour. Just see what's happening in that country that is of relevance. They remember you, they may find that they've been asked is there a British company doing such and such? And you're the answer to that question. So always, always visit your commercial offices if you have time. We have the international trade advisor as, as, as the key. And each of those different services, whether it be export market research or the export communication review, are services which you can and should use during your export journey. And I think the point about it being an artist's palette is that if, you are, if you're building a picture, you don't paint it all red, you don't paint it all green, but you use a bit of green and then a bit of red, maybe a touch of blue, then you go back and add a bit more green. You build it up <coughs> by using the different services at the different times. And the, the key to all that is your international trade advisor who can advise which service is appropriate to you at your particular part of the journey. And if you're successful, that presumably is one of the aspirations that you have, the yacht the brand new yacht that you've earned through your hard-earned uh, uh, work and so forth. But the point about it is that you are only going to be successful if you pay attention to detail. If you don't pay attention to detail, that's what happens. Brand new yacht going into the water the very first time, the front shackle was not properly fixed and it went in nose first. And if you look very carefully, you see at the top corner there, the guy <laughs> on his yacht going into the water for the very first time. Attention to detail is critical, and no more so than in exports. You can, you can make serious mistakes if you, and, and have quite high financial costs if you don't get the detail right in an export scenario. So let's, let's look at some of the, uh, the tactical things that you can do. The first one is perhaps Export Savvy. Export Savvy is a web-based training program for what you should be doing if you want to be successful as an exporter. It may be that you don't need that, but perhaps you've taken on a new member of staff who is getting into the business for the first time you can put them through Export Savvy, they can go through the training programs and they will pick up an awful lot of detail and information which is vital to a successful export operation. Then there's something called the Export Market Research Scheme. 
you will find that UKTI stresses time and time again that you must research your market. You may have a successful product that sells here in the UK, but that does not necessarily mean that it will sell well in another market. The voltage may be different. The environmental conditions might be different. The uh, legislation governing the use of that particular piece of equipment may be different. So there are any number of different aspects that you need to check if you're going to an export market. You need to look at what the opposition is doing, what the pricing structure is. Can you actually make a profit on your product delivered to that country? The export market research scheme is something that supports that research. If you, if you are genuinely researching a market, not, not marketing, but if you are researching whether there is a, a potential market for you, you may be eligible for up to 50% of the costs of that research, whether it's you going and talking to people and exploring, seeing what the, 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 the various routes to market are, what the legislation is, do you need a local partner and so forth, you could get up to 50% of the cost of that back. So it's well worth thinking about that early on in your export planning. And who, who's the best person to advise you on that? Your international trade advisor. They will put you in touch with the EMRS scheme and, and suggest that that's what takes place. Then we have something called the Export Communication Review. Very often uh, you will be perhaps translating your material into a different language. Perhaps you will be translating it into Spanish because you are going to export to Mexico. Now what you mustn't do is uh, translate it into Spanish Spanish. You need to translate it into Mexican Spanish which is subtly different and you need to be aware of that. And you also need to be aware that 20, 25 year old Mexican Spanish is different to somebody who's 40, 50 year old Mexican Spanish. So you need to get your language register correct. Export, com export communication review is a process that will look at your material and tell you whether or not you are targeting the right people, that you've got your language right, that you've got your register right. But crucially, what Export Communication Review is increasingly doing is looking at your website and saying, is your website attracting the right overseas people? And as more and more people are doing business through the website, having an ECR can dramatically increase the effectiveness of that side of your business. It will make sure that not only is it driving people to your site because it's picking up the right keywords in another language, but also that you're getting more than people just looking at your site, they're actually getting into it and you can draw them into that all important button that says order now. So the ECR is another very important uh, service which is available. And how do you find out about it? How do you engage with it? Your international trade advisor. That's the person who will, will, will feed that information to you. Recently, last year in fact, for the first time, we tried to formalize the process whereby you can access postgraduate students who are studying in this country to help your business. It may be, for instance, that you are thinking about exporting to Colombia. Now, the chances are, in some of our business schools on our MBA programs, you may well have a Colombian student doing a master's degree 
and as part of that master's degree almost certainly there will be a requirement to have some sort of project. Now that project could be something the tutors dream up or it could actually be a real life problem that you have. And we run a series of matching programs with different universities where you feed in what your research request is and they feed in students who might match that and you have an evening mixing and matching and perhaps you will get an agreement to use that postgraduate student as a member of your staff at no charge other than expenses if those happen to be incurred and can develop uh, your, your export uh, project as it were. It may be that they are helping you research what to them is their home market and what to you is a different market. It may be that they are talking by phone to potential distributors, making use of their dual language skills. But again, how do, how do you know about that service? How can you access it? Your international trade advisor will know when these things are happening, which universities are involved, and which ones are either near to you or ones that you can get to quite easily. We are also developing something called an Overseas Business Network Initiative, the OBNI. We have for many years used our commercial offices based in British embassies to undertake research for UK companies. The amount of work that that has generated, because it really is a successful way of, of undertaking uh, independent research in country, has, has swamped the existing commercial officer network and so we're expanding it to include other partners. People such as the UK IBC, the UK India Business Council, who will increasingly do a lot of the research in India, or the China British Business Council, or 40 other Chamber of Commerce type initiatives in overseas territories. Again, your first point of contact will be through your international trade advisor. It's a government service, so it starts filling in a form, but that form's relatively simply. It, it says who you are, um, what you want doing, and where you want it doing. And that will go into the system, and perhaps four or five working days later, somebody will come back to you from that territory, say, I'm the person who's going to perhaps help you undertake this re research. We've had a quick look at your offer and we think we can do it. We think it'll take this long. And have you got any other, can we check the details to, to make sure that they have understood the request properly? Once they have that sorted, they will then give you a, a time that it will take and a cost that it will cost. Up until that point there is no commitment on your part at all. But then if you agree that the cost for that is pretty good and generally speaking it, it, it is because it is subsidised by the UK government you say yes and then that project goes ahead. You get the research delivered. Uh, it, it may be uh, that you want to find half a dozen distributors that you could go and talk to, in which case the OBNI or the British Embassy will have spoken to distributors and said, are you interested in talking to this British company? And if they say yes, then they go on the list. If they say no, you're told that these people aren't interested. In it. it may be that you want to make a presentation to uh, a number of companies about a new product you have and it may be that you would quite like to do that presentation at the British Embassy and have the Embassy invite CEOs or whoever from different companies to come and see that presentation in which case that would be the route that you would do that. It, in effect it's like having a member of your own staff 
overseas doing what you want and you pick up the wage bill but without any of the other on costs of uh, having to employ somebody permanently there. So uh, o uh, the OBNI and the commercial officers are the people who would do that. Commercial officers tend to come in two types. Uh, they, there are foreign office personnel who will be on their way through the FCO, perhaps on their way to becoming ambassadors, but at the moment they will be looking after the trade function. And locally they will employ maybe 10, maybe 15 commercial officers. And each of those commercial officers will have three or four sectors to look after. They may have healthcare, they may have education. Uh, they, they, they may have heavy engineering, they may have aerospace, but there will be somebody who's got the background in your particular sector. And they're the people that can help you when you go in country. Frequently they come to this country and they will come to events not so much at going global but at something like explore, export and they will sit at a desk and you can have half an hour with them uh, you could go and say I'm thinking of doing this in Brazil what do you think and they will give you a quick off-the-cuff analysis of whether they think it's worth pursuing so a really great asset uh, but at some point you, you do need to actually have a taste of reality you need to go in country and look at what's happening because here in the UK we've got a fairly sophisticated logistics system and most of the stuff that you see moving around the country is in nice containers uh, pulled by nice polished wagons so that in a sense is, is, is what you expect you, you begin to think that's how things happen whereas you need a touch of reality uh, because that's what's likely to happen if you go to 70% of the world. Your, your nice container will be unloaded at the port and put on trucks that take it across country. So inevitably there will be increased damage. Inevitably it will take longer than you think. So when you are costing your, your final product you need to take into account that wastage and when you're suggesting a delivery period you need to assume that it will take longer you need to understand just how much longer it will take you so what what I'm suggesting is that here you are as a business person you're wanting to go to export how do you do it do you just fly there with your suitcase get off the plane and say okay what do I do that's one way I wouldn't recommend it but it's certainly one way what I would suggest is that you you start your export journey by perhaps using our postgraduates using our commercial officers doing the appropriate research perhaps having some bespoke research done through OMIS, that's where you use the commercial officers to, to do things for you. Maybe they will set you up with a diary of meetings, uh, and if, for example, you were having meetings in Mumbai, you would need very personal knowledge of the city of Mumbai as to how you can fit in meetings because from one end of the city to the other by car could quite easily take you two or three hours so if you've got a meeting there you need to know if the next meeting is the other side it's it's it, you need to allow half a day so local knowledge in, in setting up those uh, appointments uh, and the appointments you have from that system will be people who have expressed an interest in meeting you. Somebody will have spoken to them, they will have gone through your, your script, they will have explained who you are, what you are and what you're looking for, 
And these people will have said, yeah, I'm quite interested in that. I'd like to hear more. So you're talking to people who've already said, yes, they want to meet you. And that's much more effective than knocking on a door and saying, here I am. It may be that the, the programming and the timing of that visit will tie in with an exhibition. It may be that that exhibition will attract something called trade show access funding. You will get something towards the cost of your stand. It may be that you need to talk to UK export finance before you go, perhaps about organising some sort of cover or bridging loans for your, for your sales. It may be part of a much larger, higher value opportunity, in which case the, the mission might be associated with something like that done by the Deputy Prime Minister or another minister. So there are opportunities to enhance your presence by the timing of your visit. And the commercial officers will be aware of that. And what all that purpose is about is to try to ensure that when you export, you go to a country having understood what the implications are and made sure that your product matches the local needs, that you're talking to people who have expressed an interest in what you're trying to sell, that you are delivering your, your pitch at a time when you can get maximum publicity, so that we are trying to put you in the room with someone who is interested enough to say, I might want to buy. The actual selling, the dealing, is down to you. We can't do that. All we can do is put you in the room, uh, having made sure you've checked your product, you've done your research, and you're meeting the right people. Then your, then your sales skills and your interest, if you like, in, in exporting uh, comes to the fore. So that's what UKTI does. At any time there are other, there are webinars taking place, there are commercial officers visiting the UK, visiting companies, getting to know what's going on, and all of that, all of that you can access through your international trade advisor. And you can access your international trade advisor by going on the UKTI website, putting your postcode in, and ticking the box that says, I'd like to meet an international trade advisor. And one will give you a call and come out and see you. No charge. Most of UKTI services are free until you actually commission some sort of research. Uh, and then you're not charged out of the blue. You're told what it's going to cost and do you still want to go ahead. We don't want any problems. <laughs> So, thank you very much. Any questions? Export. We we cover investment as well. The 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 the, the question, if you didn't hear, was: uh, Do we cover imports, investment as well? And yes, we do. UKTI is UK Trade and Investment. So. On, on this stand here today, we tend to be from the trade sector, the exporting sector, but there are people within the organisation who look after investment coming in. And they will, they will meet international companies and perhaps draw up a short list of cities that they might, if they're looking at setting up a business, they might say, well, these are the potential cities, that one's got a good university, or these have got... Uh, good housing possibilities or there's a, a well-trained uh, engineering workforce that you could tap into. Yeah. UK Export Finance. Yeah, they're, they're just in the corner here. They, they, they are they are a separate department, if you like, within the, the overall government's attitude to, to export. 
Okay, well, have a nice rest of your show uh, and uh, go on the website, put your postcode in and click I want an ITA. <laughs> Thank you.